In this video, we're going to talk about how you can use Postgres within a Docker container. Docker is handy because it makes it really easy to just delete your database and restart, really convenient for development. But it makes this convenience possible by adding a bunch of new commands and things you have to understand. So getting started might be a little bit of a learning curve, but once you understand, it makes things a lot easier and can be a really convenient tool for development and obviously for production as well, if you end up using containers in production. I like to use Postgres in a container, even if my main application is not containerized, just because I like to have that isolated database container where I can delete it, recreate it, have multiple instances of databases, anything that I need to do. Now, before we get started, I wanted to share two valuable resources with you. The first being my backend engineering mind map, which will give you an overview of all of the major technologies you'll want to know as a software engineer related to backend development, as well as an example learning roadmap. The mind map comes with a two hour video going over all of the information. So you're not just there trying to figure it out on your own. The other major thing is if you want to break into the software engineering career, then I have a mentorship program where I will teach you the skills that you need to know to succeed and help you find that first role or advance your career if you're already in the tech field. So I'll have a link to both of those things down below. So to get started, we will download Docker. So just go here and then choose the operating system. I'm on Apple Silicon and then go through the installation for Docker. Now, once Docker is installed, you'll have this little thing up here at the top and you can go to the dashboard. This will bring up your Docker containers. Now I'm actually going to do most of this from the terminal, but I wanted to show this as an option. So you can go and work with your containers and your images here. So we'll say Docker run, and then we'll give our container a name. So we'll say some Postgres, you can name it whatever you want. So if your application has a name, you could call it that. Basically some way for you to identify this container by name. Then you can use dash E to provide any environment variables. The main one I care about here is the password for Postgres. So this is going to be important when we want to actually connect to the database. So we'll say Postgres password and then an equal sign. And then some password, we'll just say my secret password and it's breaking it up across multiple lines, but we'll try to get this to where we can see everything conveniently. So Docker run name is some Postgres, environment variable Postgres password is my secret password. Now we can do a port mapping. So you can say 5431 is mapped to 5432. And basically what this is doing is Postgres is going to use the port 5432. However, we're going to map that to the port 5431 in our host system, our computer. And I only chose to make these different for one reason. You could just make them exactly the same, but I decided to make them separate just in case you were already running Postgres and it was using 5432. If you were working with Postgres before you started working with containers, that port might be taken. So I didn't want to try to use 5432. I also wanted to show you that it's possible to change the port on the outside while keeping the port on the inside the same. So when you connect to this Postgres database from your application, it's going to use port 5431. Then we will run this detached. So it's not going to run in this window. It'll be in the background. And then the last thing we need is the image that we want to base this container off of. So the image is the software. The creators of Postgres created an image that is the Postgres database. That's a snapshot of the software we actually want to use, but when we want to run it, it's created as a container. So in order to tell Docker what image we want to use for this container, we just put it right there and it's just called Postgres. I think that's it. So we should be able to run. We see this ID here and now what? Well, that's pretty much it. You have a database running. So you can use a connection string just with this password, my secret password, and this port. However, to actually see this, we can say docker ps a, and this is going to give us all of our containers. If we zoom out, we might be able to see this a little bit cleaner. I don't want it to be too small here, but I want to be able to easily see that this is basically a table with the container ID, the image, when you created it, and if it's up, the port mapping, and then the name that we provided for this container. Now you can connect to this from a few different sources. I'm going to show you three of them. So we'll connect from PG admin, which is a GUI tool. I'll show you how to do it from the terminal and from an application. So we will register a connection to a new server. We'll give it a name. What we use here doesn't really matter. We'll just say Postgres in container, and then we'll set the connection. The host name is going to be localhost port 5431 database is Postgres username Postgres password is 
my secret password, which we set in that environment variable, save password, hit save. And here is our connection. We should be able to go into public and then into tables. And when we have database tables, this is where they will show up. Now let's talk about how we can connect from the terminal. The typical way of doing this would be with PSQL, a CLI tool, but we're going to do that within the container instead of connecting from PSQL on our local computer. So to do that, the command is docker exec, and then we'll use dash IT for interactive mode. The I is interactive, and then I think the T stands for TTY, which is a terminal session. The container we want to use is called some Postgres. That's the name we gave it. The command we want to run is PSQL and the PSQL command itself requires a user to be provided. So we'll say user is Postgres. So this will be the full command. So we run and now we are connected to that database and we should be able to use some of the PSQL commands. Now I do have a full video on Postgres if you want to know how to actually use Postgres, but Real quickly, we can say backslash DT to see our tables. We can also execute SQL here, so we can say create table, example, and we'll just create one column called data, and we'll make it of type char. So this said create table, confirming that it worked, and we should now be able to go over to our PG admin, do a refresh of our tables, and we should see this example table we just created. Now to connect from software, that's going to depend on the language and framework that you're using, but pretty much wherever you would use a connection string, you're just going to use localhost, and in this case, port 5431, making sure to use the password you set in that environment variable. And then by default, the user is going to be Postgres. So here's an example using a Django application where I am using load.env coming from the .env package. So you might need to install python.env with pip install python-.env. Then you'll be able to read environment variables from a .env file. So it's going to look something like this here, os.environ.get, passing in what that environment variable is named. And here is what that looks like in the .env file. So making sure all of those are set. And then what we do is we create the connection string, however you would do that in your application. And I'm also printing the connection details so I can confirm that the environment variables are being read. So then if it can't connect, I can know if it's that the environment variables are not being read or if there's an issue with the actual database credentials. You don't wanna think it's an issue with the database connection when really you're just not reading values from the environment file. So now I should be able to connect to that database so I can apply migrations from our ORM. This creates a bunch of tables. And now back in the terminal, we should be able to see those when we do backslash DT. So you can see we just created a bunch of tables from our application. And you can also see that it printed the connection details. So you can see what that looks like here. Now, one of the benefits of working with a Docker container is you can easily reset things. So if you're developing and you just need to quickly nuke your database entirely and then get a fresh one, you can do that very easily with a container. So I'll show you how to do that now. So first to get out of this, you will use backslash Q. This will bring us back to our terminal. We have Docker PS A. We can see our container there. We'll say Docker stop some Postgres. It will repeat the name indicating that it was stopped. And then we can say Docker RM some Postgres. Same idea here. Now we can say Docker PS A and see that there's nothing being displayed. So we got rid of our container and now we can go up and rerun that command we used to launch Postgres in the first place, hit enter. Our connection string should be pretty much exactly the same. So we can still connect to it from our application or within PG admin. If I refresh our tables, you'll see that tables is now empty. And if you use PSQL, again, just showing you the connection from all of these different positions. So did not find any relations. We could go execute some code to create tables for us. And we should be able to see those now. There they are. As well as from PG admin, we'll do a refresh on the tables and there are all of our tables. So you can see we didn't have to change any of our connection details. We were just able to completely reset the database and things worked. 
It's also really handy if you need a couple of different database instances, you could create another Postgres container with just a different port mapping. So 5430, for example, and then you can switch between those as needed. Now, the next thing you should know is that when you reset containers, you lose all of the data in the containers. There is a way around this if you want to persist that data. You shouldn't really trust containers to live on forever. So if there's any data you want saved to disk, then you're going to want to use a volume. So to do this, we'll first quit and then clear. And now we'll say docker ps-a. You don't have to list these out, but just to show you here is our container. We'll say docker stop some postgres, docker rm some postgres, docker volume create postgres data call it whatever you wish now we should be able to run our previous docker run command making one small modification i like to have the dash d postgres at the end for some reason so i'm going to put it right here so dash v for volume postgres data or whatever you called the volume and this will map to some location in the container. So you can think of this as a folder on your local system and then mapping that to inside the container, similar to how we did the ports. So for Postgres data, we're going to want this to be in var lib postgresql data. Hit enter, and this will create a container now using that volume. So when we create tables, we should be able to see those inside of our database connection. And typically, if we would remove the container, delete it, and create a new one, that would be gone. But with a volume, it should still be there. So we'll stop our container. We will remove the container and then recreate it using that same volume. Go do a refresh and see that our tables still exist. And if for some reason we tried to recreate those tables, it would say that there's nothing to do in this case because that data still exists. So that's your overview of working with Postgres inside of Docker. Hopefully that gets you going in the right direction. There's probably so much more we could talk about, but the main thing is I wanted you to be able to start using Postgres as you would a normal database without having to install it and set it up locally on your machine. You can just set it up through Docker. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know and what other videos you might be interested in seeing. And again, if you want the backend mind map or if you're interested in mentorship to land a software engineering role, then check out the links down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in upcoming content.